knit thy threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign, one that cares for thee and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor both by sea and land to spend the night in storms, the day in cold, while thou liest warm at home, secure and safe, and craves no other tribute at thy hand but love, fair looks, and true obedience, to little payment for so great a debt. I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war where they should kneel for peace, or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway, when they are meant to serve, love, and obey. Why are our bodies soft and weak and smooth, unapt to toil and trouble, but that our soft conditions and our hearts should well agree with our external parts? Now come, come, you throward and unable words. My mind hath been as big as one of yours. My heart is great. My reason happily more to bandy word for word and frown for frown. But now I see our lances are but straws, our strength as weak, our weakness past compare, that seeming to be most which we least are. And veil your stomachs where it is no boot, and place your hand beneath your husband's foot, in token of which duty, if he please, my mind is ready. May it do him ease. Now there's a lusty wench. <laughs> Come on and kiss me, Kate. Let's to bed. We three are married, but you two are sped. I've won the wager, though you've won the white. And I, being the winner, God give you good night. <laughs> As a wonder by your leave, she will be tamed so. 